been doing a series on the gathering. It's kind of a different, little different format to, and I know some of you are new today, and we do, we break into groups, and everybody's like, what's happening to me? And, uh, and, and we understand it's different and unusual, but sometimes, you know, Anything that is unusual for somebody to walk into, I, I remember back when I used to lead worship at Christ the King, and you know we went 40 minutes to 50 minutes of music straight out of the gate. You know, you walked in, and everybody's got their hands up, and John Kent was dancing across the stage, and after he hugged everybody that came in, which that freaked people out too, you know. And, uh, for, you know, I mean, he was 65 years old. It wasn't like weird, weird, but he was a nice old guy, he was like having your grandpa give you a big hug when you came in, and, uh, but he was very exuberant. It was not, you know, like your little side hug, it was your, you know, bear hug, and, and then, but then people would come in, and we, you know, we say stand up, we'd sing, you know, it's like a, a concert, you know, and people are standing and standing, and is this ever going to end, you know, um, and so anytime you go into a different culture, we, there's a little bit of shock you know, when you do things different. I remember um, there, there's a great church, black church down in town called Rama. I've had uh, Lafayette Scales speak at some of the things I've done before in the past. And uh, he was good friends with my father. And he would know my name if you said it, but he would really know my dad. And, uh, and somebody moved into an area down there. And I said, you know, hey, you ought to go over and try this Rama church. And, and I said, but you I got to tell you, their services are a little longer than a normal service. So they went, and four hours later, uh, <laughs> the church had it, and they were in shock, you know, with that. So, so what happened was, um, when I started out the series, I talked about this, but I just want to do a little recap. I was thinking about why do we do church the way we do it? Why do we come in and sing 20 minutes now, you know, something like that. Um, what, are, what are the elements that we're doing? And then I wanted to go back and look at the New Testament and see what did they do in the New Testament? What was the gathering all about? And what I discovered was, and you can see it on page two, there are a lot of scriptures about gathering and, um, and assembling together and bringing the body together. And when you discover all these scriptures and you start seeing what's in them, we, we saw that fellowship and eating together, that was a big chunk of it, and prayer is a big part of it, and teaching and proclaiming was a big part of it, encouragement and singing and good reports was a big part of it. And then what I want to talk about today is the press in and the gifts, that there was this, there was this thing that happened when they came together where they tried to get in close to God and have the Holy Spirit work in, in them, and, and they were looking for uh, the Holy Spirit to empower them and speak into their lives and uh, to uh, do uh, miracles and healings and things like that. That was, that was all part of uh, these gatherings that, that happened. Uh, so let's look at some scriptures here. And these first ones on page three are kind of like about um, the, the sense of, of worship that needs to happen. And in Second Chronicles, it says this, it says, and all the Levitical singers and all the musicians, they made themselves heard with one voice. So there's this corporateness to, right? A lot of times when we think we come sing, I've, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go worship the Lord. But we should say, we, it's a, it's a corporate thing that we do together as the body of Christ. So they, with one voice, and it says, then at the end, then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. And if you went back and studied that, you would discover that's the Shekinah glory of God, the glory that came over the, the tabernacle, that came over the temple. And, uh, and it's, it's illustrative, it's symbolic of the presence of, of God. We remember when uh, the spiritual realm opened at the transfiguration, when they went up on the mount, uh, it was uh, Peter, uh, James, and John went up with Jesus, 
And Elijah and Moses showed up, remember that story, and the, sp- the spiritual realm opened up to them, and they could see that. And Peter's thing was, whoa, okay, let's build a small house and stay here forever because it was such a good thing. So that glory, that presence, that you know, spiritual realm broke through them because they were worshiping. Uh, Psalm 29, ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name, Worship the Lord in holy array. Uh, Psalm 63, O God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So there's this, you know, if you're truly uh, seeking God, there's, there's this thirst for him. You want more of him. And that's the idea behind a, a press in time. That's, and you're not going to find press in in the Bible. I mean, you're going to read, you're not going to find where it says press in. I'm describing what was happening, okay? Uh, where, where they were, like it says in one spot, we'll read in a minute, they were ministering to the Lord. So they were kind of getting in close and praying and fasting at that point. Okay, Matthew 3 says, as for me, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming is mightier than I. This is John the Baptist speaking. And I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So we know that was, that's one of the ministries of Jesus, to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. If you read the book of Acts, we see that happen. And then John, Jesus says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit, and in truth. So flip over the page there. Now, as you think about these, the the context of those scriptures then is, okay, God's power can show up when we worship. Um, We want to have a true heart for worship. We want to have a thirst for him. There's, There's no way to manipulate God into showing up. Does that make sense? We read John 3.3, 3, the Holy Spirit's like the what? Wind in that description. And he blows through when he feels like it. And, and so we're always inviting him, but in the first place, we know he's always here. The scripture says the glory of God fills the earth. So if we could pull back that curtain that keeps the two, you know, dimensions apart. If we could look into that next dimension, if we could pull it back and see, you know, Elijah and Moses and Jesus glorified, it's right here. I mean, it's right here, right now. So it's a question of, do we tune into it and try to receive what God wants to speak to us? Because it's here. But we're looking for this press in concept. So we're trying to get in close. We're trying to hear from God. We're trying to allow him to speak to us as a body, but also as individuals. Um, Let's look at some of the scriptures here on page four. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So something that might happen during press in is a time of repentance. You, You might just... Find somebody that's just going, oh, God's really speaking to me that I've got to change this. And remember, repentance means to change your mind and go the other way. And so it may be a sin in your life, or God may be redirecting you to do something different with your life. It may not be that what you're doing is bad, but he wants you to do something else at this point. So sometimes there's a repentance, and then there's refreshing. It says that a refreshing can come that that you can sense that God comes in if you repent, your sins will be taken away and and you can have a refreshing. I think that's part of what press in is. is. Uh, Acts chapter four, it says, when they had prayed, the place where they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word with boldness. And remember the two reasons uh, for gatherings are to build up the body and to advance the kingdom. And so this kind of does both. They're praying, they get filled up, but then they begin to speak with boldness. What are they doing? They're advancing the kingdom. It wasn't that, you know, 
the Holy Spirit came and the place was shaken and I ran over to Ed and said, Ed, you got it. Oh, man, get saved right now. Well, he's already saved. They didn't just start preaching to each other with boldness. They left the place and preached with boldness. And so we've got to be thinking about, you know, press in as to, to fire us up and to energize us and to get us filled up with Holy Spirit so we can do what we're supposed to be doing in the kingdom. Acts 13, 2 And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I would call them. Saul, soon to be Paul. So Paul and Barnabas end up being, it was a time of what I'm thinking of as press in, right? They're coming in there, they're getting close. They're ministering to the Lord. They've been fasting. They're trying to seek his presence and seek his word. And the Holy Spirit said, and I don't know how he said it, if he just spoke out loud, probably spoke through somebody. And they said, hey, I'm sensing the Holy Spirit saying, you two are supposed to go on a mission trip. Those are, you know, you got to be careful with those because somebody could stand up here and look back there and say, Uncle Dave, you're supposed to go to Zimbabwe next week. (laughs) That's essentially what they did, right? (laughs) But Obviously, they got confirmation because they went and then there was fruit from that trip and the kingdom was expanded. But it came through a time of press in, of trying to get close so they could hear the Holy Spirit. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1.6, For this reason I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. And so people were receiving gifts and they were receiving um, you know, supernatural impartation by people laying hands on them and and praying. And this is something that I would see happening during press in. And sometimes that's happened during our press in. I'd be up here praying and I just sense I was supposed to go over and lay hands on somebody and pray for them. And I went over and did that and they said, yeah, I needed that. And I noticed there's a few other people that do that in here also. Um, I think it's generally best you ask permission before you... I've got a lot of authority here. I can generally go over and lay hands on somebody. If I know them, I'm okay. If I don't know, I would ask permission. Can I lay hands on you and pray for you? And and I think that's a respectful thing to do. Uh, Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. And I think this goes with Acts chapter three and the repentance. I think sometimes God wants to purify us Um, but I think the fire has two purposes in our lives. One's to purify, but one's to make us go. You know, you are a light set on a hill, and we're supposed to shine, so we need that light shining strong. We need that bursting forth out from inside of us. Uh, Matthew 22, and then he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is a great and foremost commandment. Luke 4, 8, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I think in press in, you're really, you're hanging around and say, God, I really love you. I, I love you. What, how can I serve you? And you're, you're looking for him to speak into your life and give you direction and, and uh, give you a purpose, maybe even give you specifics. I mean, it could be as specific as, you know, Barnabas and Paul, you're supposed to go do this. And so when, when, you're, when you're coming into a time where you're, and this is important. Press in is not just that thing that ends, happens at the end of our service. We're specifically trying to create an atmosphere of press in, but you can press in at home. You could press in at small group. You could call two or three people together and say, I've got this really big thing going and I want to seek God about it. Will you do that with me? So press in can happen in different places. It's not just this event at the end of a service or at the at a end of our service. Um, and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we don't have time to go, to go through this whole thing, but you know, there's a big section here about talking about gifts and talking about tongues. And Paul says, you know, um, I speak in tongues more than all of you, uh, but not everyone speaks in tongues. And it's, it's more important to speak, uh, to edify and build up. And there are, you know, you can get a tongues and interpretation that does build up because there's an interpretation in English. 
Um, and if tongues freaks you out, come and talk to me. I, I've spoken in tongues since I was about 17 years old. So we don't base our life on how we feel about things. We base it on what we know God says is true. And then we hope the feelings catch up, right? So when we come into a press in, we're not coming there and, you know, if you didn't get a giant goose pimple, it doesn't mean God didn't show up. Because we're doing this based on what the Holy Spirit is working and doing in our life. Now, what I've known is when you've come in with the right attitude like that, usually you feel something. But it doesn't have to depend on that. So when we come in to press in, another thing we're looking for is the, the expression of spiritual gifts that people might have a prophecy. They might have a word of knowledge. They might have a gift of wisdom that they could share with somebody in the group. There might be a word of encouragement. Somebody might be down. There might be somebody that has a specific uh, word. You know, you've, I sense that you've got something wrong with your back or something wrong. You've got a headache or you've got some other thing and I'd like to pray for you. That's not going to hurt you, right? And it's really good if the Holy Spirit speaks that to you. Don't be afraid to go up and say, hey, I want to pray for you. Now, you've got to be smart. If you're just learning how to do this and you get some kind of weird inkling in your head that might freak somebody out, you know, like God told me you've got cancer and I'm supposed <laughs> to pray for you. Okay, leave that part out. Just, I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you. And then see if you're accurate about your stuff. And down the road, if you're hitting 100% of the time, then you can say weird, freaky stuff in the front. Okay? But you've got to be careful with your gift, you know, that you're not, you know, doing things you shouldn't be doing. You might have a, a, a tongue and an interpretation. That, and that's a great thing for that to happen in press in because the people that are coming to press in are more sensitive and looking for spiritual things to happen, okay? We're trying not to do that in the beginning of the service because, uh, frankly, some people have come in here and they've heard people speak in tongues and they're, they're out the door because it's just too weird for them. Uh, so, and Paul says that'll happen. He says that in 1 Corinthians 14. He says, if you guys are speaking in tongues, people are going to think you're nuts, uh, so he doesn't say stop doing it. He says it's more important to do what? Speak in English. You know, when I was in India, I pray in the spirit while I'm praying for people. And the music is so loud, nobody knows what I'm saying anyways. So, but I just pray in the spirit. Sometimes you might come up here and want me to pray for you. I might start praying in the spirit because um, then I hear from God more clearly and often I'll get a vision and then I'll, uh, I'll share that vision about what I think God is saying. And so that's another expression of a spiritual gift, you know, a dream or a vision. So, you know, we're getting right down to the end of the service here. We're going to pray and the band's going to come up. We're going to sing another song. Then we're going to go into a time of press in. Our goal is for everybody here to stay for press in. We know everybody can't stay. Sometimes, you know, people make plans and don't think about press in and you know, and they've got to go do stuff. Sometimes you've got kids in children's ministry, you can go get them and come back up to press in. Press in will last long enough for you to do that. And it's good for your children to be uh, exposed to God working like this. And, and so, you know, we want the teens to stay. We want, you know, kids to come back up in here. We want everybody to stay. But, you know, we're, we're not going to like threaten you or beat you to stay. We're going to encourage you to stay, and we're going to keep talking about it because I want to keep <laughs> building who's staying and press in because I think the more that we do it, the more you will receive. And the more people that stay, as we talked about last week, the more you pour into the gathering, the more blessings everybody receives in the gathering. And so when everybody's you know, using their gifting to build up the body and advance the kingdom, we're the strongest and healthiest that we can be. So that's press in. If you've got questions about that and, and concerns about that, you know, you want to talk about anything under the sun or if you want to talk about tongues or if you want to talk about Pentecostal slash charismatic and what does that mean, if you want to get filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to go down in the green room 
uh, which looks much nicer. It's still a little dumpy, but we're getting there. Um, but we're going to do press in up here. And so if you can stay and enjoy it, some, sometimes different things happen. Sometimes it's just we sing the song, and that's, you know, there's a couple of prayers and things like that. It's nothing spectacular, but it is because the Holy Spirit's touching people and speaking to them, and that's spectacular, right? Um, you know, so, you know, I, I kind of, I, I, I'll get myself in trouble here. Um, I'm not looking for gold dust to come down from, from heaven. I'm not looking for balls of fire. If it happens, that's okay, you know. That's great, but I'm just not looking for that. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to see real, what I would like to see is laying on a hands and somebody, you know, says, hey, you're supposed to go to this neighborhood and share Jesus Christ. And you two are supposed to go do that. And they go, wow, yeah, I've, I thought the Holy Spirit was saying that to me. And now this is it. I'm going to do it now. That's what I think we need to hear. Amen. And that's, that's the kind of stuff we want to get done. So let's stand together. Band's going to come up. Father, um, it's a little bit of a, a stretch for some of us, this idea of press in. And uh, I just ask that your Holy Spirit would just, just move it into our hearts in a way that it's comfortable that people can think about it, that people can pray it through and, and be involved in it as much as they want to be involved. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would increase in all our lives. We want more love, more power, more of your Holy Spirit, more of your gifts. And, and, and we want them all, not for the sake of us showing off, but for us to build up the body and for us to expand the kingdom, because that's why you gave them to us, to use them as tools. And so we, we understand that that's what they're for, and we, we understand the purpose of them, and we want to use them wisely, but we want to use them boldly as you direct through your Holy Spirit. Father, I know there's people out here that have gifts that have not yet come to the surface, that, that they need to be released in their lives. We just pray that they would be released and people would find their giftings and they would find uh, and be able to express these things to, for the good of the body and the good of the kingdom. We pray this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus and God's people said, amen. Your grace is deeper than the ocean, Your Grace goes farther than I'll ever run your grace. We no longer are orphans, your grace.